My name is Scott San Giacomo. I am the author and illustrator of Bedhead Ted, a new middle grade graphic novel coming from HarperCollins, summer 2021. I'm here in Massachusetts, but I'm thrilled to be a part of Virtual Frankfurt 2020 to share my book with you. Meet Ted. He lives in the town of Brookside, and he's always had one big problem, his hair. No matter what he does, haircuts, gels, or hats, nothing tames his unruly mane. So starting the fourth grade is going to be an adventure to say the least, and one of the big obstacles to overcome will be the teasing from bullies. After all, that's how he got his name, Bedhead Ted. <laughs> Luckily, Ted has his best friend Stacy to help him make it through. So when Stacy becomes obsessed with Brookside's mythical beast, a giant raccoon terrorizing the town, Ted is there to help him unravel the mystery. But when a few new friends enter the mix, Ted's friendship with Stacy gets a little rocky. Feeling alone and at his lowest, Ted discovers something amazing about his hair. For the first time in his life, Ted wonders if his hair just may be a gift rather than an epic curse. Could his out-of-control hair be the one thing that not only helps him solve the mystery of the Brookside Beast, but also gets his best friend back? So this is a story about friendship and family and the power of being you. I hope this character and this story connects with readers all over the world, and I can't thank you enough for taking the time to watch. Take care. Hi, my name is Tracy Holzer and I've written a middle grade novel called Brave in the Woods and I wanted to talk a little about what the story, what inspired the story and it's actually storytelling itself. I am fascinated by this idea of our identities being informed by the stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves and what if we tell ourselves a story about who we are and it actually happens to not be true. Um, this is a story about Juniper Creedy. She's 12 years old, and their family is descended from the Brothers Grimm. And family legend says that they're cursed, that the brothers were cursed by a witch to suffer through extreme bouts of luck, both good and bad. And nobody knows this better than Juni. Um, she's only alive because of a miracle. Three miracles, actually. Her brother Connor is the one who saved her life. And so when she wakes up in the middle of the night with this feeling of antlers growing from her head, she suddenly believes that perhaps the curse has awakened again. And then when she finds out the next day that Connor has gone missing in Afghanistan, she is convinced. So she pours through the Grimm's fairy tales and the stories from her family and does what all good fairy tale characters must. And she sends herself on a quest through the woods to break the curse and bring her brother home. I'm happy to be part of Virtual Frankfurt 2020. Thanks. The City Spies. Five kids from around the globe. A hacker, a magician, a code breaker, a rebel, and a genius. Operating out of a secret location in the north of Scotland. They are the biggest secret in British secret intelligence. And now, as young people from around the world head to Paris, it's up to the five of them to stop a dangerous villain and save the day. City Spies, a brand new series from award-winning author James Ponty. Hi, my name is James Ponty, and I am the author of City Spies, and I am delighted to be part of Virtual Frankfurt 2020. City Spies was published this past March, got onto the New York Times bestseller list, which was very exciting. And now it is very exciting because it is coming out in different markets throughout Europe. It's coming out in Germany, the Netherlands, Poland, France, and Italy. And Italy is so thrilling for me because I was born in Italy. I'm Italian. That's where my family's from. And that is what inspired me to write this series, in fact, a series about international kids from all around the world who come together. They operate out of a base in the UK, but really the stories, the plots, and the themes that we're working with apply to kids anywhere and everywhere, which has made it so much fun to write. I've really enjoyed working on the series. I hope you enjoy reading the series. Book one has come out. Book two comes out this spring, and I just began writing book three. So the City Spies series is well underway. Hopefully there's a place for it with you. 
I look forward to next year, maybe Frankfurt 2021, where we don't have to do this virtually, and we can meet face-to-face -face and talk about books and the things we love about that. But until then, have a great day and have a great year. Thank you so very much. Hi, my name is Ellen Hagen, and I'm the author of Reckless, Glorious Girl. It's a middle grade novel in verse that follows Beatrice Miller, a seventh grader in Bardstown, Kentucky, who lives with her mama and her mom, as we travel with her through the ups and downs of seventh grade life, as she asks the questions, who am I, who will I be when I grow up, and will my outside ever match the way I feel on the inside? Reckless, Glorious Girl is coming out from Bloomsbury in February 2021. To germinate is to shoot forth, straight up from the ground, rise into existence, exist, begin, develop from seed or spore, from bulb to plant, from kid to girl to young woman, develop. To burgeon is to bud, quick with flourish, sprout and arise. Too bad I don't feel like either of those words, still growing, still trying to figure out how to take up space and show off. Instead, I'm still somewhere underground, beneath it all, watching everyone else push up and grow, rising up all around me. How I'd love to be Beatrice Miller, queen of the Amplify, expansion even. Tell Mema to watch out for me and my reckless blossoming. Hi everyone, this is Jody Lynn Anderson. Um, my new book is called The Memory Thief. It's the first in a trilogy called The Thirteen Witches. And it's about a young girl who fights the worst witches um, in the world with the power of storytelling and her imagination. Um, and it's a really personal and um, special story for me because it's really about um, how stories can save people in dark times and how stories and imagination um, are so powerful in pushing back against darkness and things in the world that we we don't quite know how to cope with and how um, how imagination um, can conquer uh, so many of, of the the worst forces in the world um, and so it's just been a real um, you know, coping strategy for me to write this book and uh, in kind of uncertain times. And I think it's uh, it's very empowering and, um, you know, hopeful. And, um, you know, I hope it feels that way to readers. And it's also hopefully funny and silly and quirky and all the things that I, I really kind of love including in my books. But um, But it's also got sort of this deep meaning for me. And I hope that um, that kind of comes through to, to readers. Thanks. Hi, I'm Julie Sternberg, author of Summer of Stolen Secrets, which is due out June 1st, 2021. Uh, I live in Brooklyn now, but I grew up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which is a smaller city. And on Main Street in Baton Rouge, my family owned a department store. I'm gonna show you now, this is the architect's rendering of the store as it was first conceived. And here is an overhead view of the store, which was quite large. Uh, I started working in the store when I was five years old. It dominated my childhood. Everything from what, how I spent my Saturdays to every item of clothing that I wore. I always had to look good and represent the store. Here's a picture of me at a school dance. Everyone else is wearing a lovely dress and I am wearing a velvet business suit. Uh, the person who ran the show in our family and in the store was my grandmother, Leah. She was small and very tough. She and her husband, my grandfather, fled Nazi Germany in the early 30s uh, with my dad and his siblings because, of course, it was quite a bad situation for Jews then, and, and she and my family are Jewish. Um, so I've always long, long wanted to write a book that tells uh, the story of a department store in Baton Rouge and a tough grandmother like my grandmother. And so Summer of Stolen Secrets is that book. It tells the story of Kat, who is 13 years old, she lives in Brooklyn with her parents. They've had a terrible falling out with her very tough grandmother who lives in Baton Rouge. 
and Kat ends up spending the summer in Baton Rouge working in her grandmother's department store uh, with her very reckless cousin Lexi who does things that no one approves of, including Kat. And Kat discovers in the department store a room where her grandmother has been keeping her secrets. Kat steals the secrets, learns to understand her grandmother because of them, and helps to heal her broken family. I hope you enjoyed the book. Hi, my name is Brian. I am the writer and illustrator of The Conjurers. My uncle taught me my first magic trick when I was in the second grade, and I've had the magic bug ever since. So The Conjurers is my tribute to magic and magicians from all over the world. I got to draw upon um, magic and magicians from Russia and from Egypt and from India and Japan and England and France and of course here in the United States to create the characters um, and the world of the conjurers. Um, and I'm thrilled that via the magic of the internet I actually get to visit with you today. Uh, of course if I was there in person I'm sure I would have done something pretty cool. Probably would have had you pick a card, any card, and then I probably would have had you sign it. And then I could have made it reappear in your shoe or on the ceiling. It would have been astounding. Um, but thankfully, with magic, even though you're there and I'm here, I could still give you a, a small demonstration of the impossible. Welcome to the Conjurian. Hi, I'm Nova Wheatman and I'm a children's author from Melbourne, Australia. My book is called Sick Bay and it came out in June 2019 in Australia and it's coming out next year in the US, uh, spring 2021 with Simon and Schuster. The new title is called It All Begins with Jelly Beans. The book, I guess, is about two girls, uh, Meg and Riley. They're both 12 and they meet in the school sick bay. They think they have each other sussed out, but actually what unravels over the course of several weeks is these encounters in the sick bay where they begin to know each other in a different way. Meg is a loner. She is, I guess, avoiding school, avoiding bullies at school. She So she's kind of hides out in sick bay reading Anne of Green Gables and trying not to be seen. R Riley is type one diabetic and so she goes to sick bay for medical reasons. The two of them get stuck together and I guess it's really the story of learning who you want to be and who you want to have as a friend. And I hope you enjoy it. Thanks very much. Hi, my name is Amy Carter and I am thrilled to be here with you at Virtual Frankfurt 2020. I'm the author of the number one best-selling Animox series, also known as the Simon Thorne series. And I am so excited to announce that I have a new book for youth and middle grade readers called The Curse of the Phoenix, or Der Flug des Phoenix in German, which I don't speak, so I am so sorry if that was terrible. Since its release in Germany, it has spent several months on Der Spiegel Youth bestseller list, and it will be released in the US in May 2021 by Margaret K. McEldery Books. As for what it's about, uh, please forgive me, I don't have this memorized. 12-year-old Zack and Lou grew up on their mother's stories of the Wildwoods, an imaginary land where mythical beasts roam free. These creatures fill the pages of Zack's sketchbooks and inspire Lou's love of animals, and on most days, they're the only thing the twins still have in common. When their mother dies, a heartbroken Lou and Zack are shipped off to England to spend the summer with relatives they've never met. It doesn't take the twins long to uncover the secret tucked away in the forest behind their ancestral home. Their mother's incredible stories about unicorns and dragons and centaurs weren't make-believe after all. Their family serves as keeper of the Wildwoods, the last place on earth where these mythical creatures can live safe from human harm. But there are also many dangers in these lands, and they are bound by a terrible curse. When Lou and Zack fall victim to it, their only hope of escape depends on the very last phoenix left in the world. But will breaking the curse mean the end of the Wildwoods? Thank you so much for your time, and I hope you're having a wonderful virtual Frankfurt. Hi. My name is James Bird, and today I'm going to introduce you to my debut middle grade novel, The Brave. The Brave is about Colin, a 13-year-old Native American boy who lives with his father in California. Colin is neurodiverse. In his case, when someone speaks to him, instead of just responding, he counts all the letters. For example, I'll be Colin. Hi, Colin. Hey. Hi. How are you? 
Nine. I'm okay, just doing the author video. That's cool. I'll talk to you later. Bye. 29. Bye. As you can see, Colin's brain is pretty special. But for a 13-year-old boy, it makes it very difficult to have friends. And it makes him a prime target for bullies at school. And that's where the story begins. So after another fight at school, Colin is sent to live with his mother, a woman who he has never met in a place called Minnesota. There he learns all about his tribe, his new family, and what it feels like to actually have his very first friend and his first real crush. His neighbor, Orenda, is a girl who lives in a tree house next door. She's convinced that she's turning into a butterfly. So naturally, these two become very close. Orenda shows him the one thing in life that he always felt was a curse can actually be a gift because life is full of gifts. So join me, James Bird, and Colin on an exciting new adventure to find out what it truly means to be brave. I'm Donna Higuera, and this is my middle grade novel, Lupe Wong Won't Dance. The publisher is Levine Querido, and it is going to be released in a few short weeks. Um, Lupe Wong, the character Lupe Wong, showed up one evening over a dinner conversation with my daughters. My younger daughter had learned that day at school that she was going to have to square dance in PE. She wasn't happy about it. She wasn't happy that she was gonna to have to square dance with a boy or that she was gonna to have to dance with whichever boy asked her. Well, it got me thinking about my experiences and said, wow, I went through the same thing and they're still doing this. Um, and I thought, gosh, you know what? If I could have spoken up for myself, what would I have said? And this character Lupe Wong plopped down at my dinner table and started making the arguments that I wish I had made. And um, while this, the book isn't about square dancing, it's about navigating friendships and the awkwardness of middle school and being biracial and, um, and trying to form arguments when you're in an age where you're probably not the best at forming arguments and Lupe doesn't, isn't always successful at it. But that evening I uh, went to bed and said, you know, she kept talking to me and I said, I'm gonna try writing a paragraph and see what happens. And this was the first paragraph I wrote. My gym shorts burrow into my butt crack like a frightened groundhog. Note to self, remember school shorts from home so you don't have to wear the scratchy school owner ever again. I can fix this. I pull up my knee pads, adjust my wristbands, and tighten my ponytail with a yank. Ready for battle, aka 7th grade spring PE. So anyhow, Lupe was a really fun character to write. She tends to do... Um, the wrong things in making her argument, which makes for a really fun book. And, um, but you know, she learns a lot along the way about how to treat her friends and how to navigate friendships and how to form a good argument. But um, anyway, really fun book to write and thank you for listening. Hi, I'm J.H. Reynolds, author of the new fun and spooky book series for kids, Monster Street. Each book is a standalone story full of thrills, chills, and mysteries, so you can read them in any order. And every chapter ends with a cliffhanger to keep young readers turning the pages. In the first book, The Boy Who Cried Werewolf, a boy named Max sets out to solve the mystery of his father's death and soon discovers that his father was killed by a legendary werewolf. In order to avenge his father, Max embarks on a quest to defeat the werewolf once and for all. In the second book, The Halloweeners, a group of friends are turned into the monsters of their costumes on Halloween night and the new kid in town, Fisher, has to find a way to turn them back into their normal selves by sunrise or else they'll remain monsters forever. In the third book, Carnival, two brothers, Ben and Kip, visit a strange Halloween carnival and are offered a free ticket for unlimited rides. But they soon learn that nothing at the carnival is actually free. Everything has a price. In the fourth book, Camp of No Return, a girl named Harper gets sent to the most magical summer camp on the planet, only to discover that things are not what they seem. The camp is hiding a very dark secret, and she must decide if she's willing to risk her life to uncover the truth. Come join me as we journey through these pages of adventure and mystery, and see if together we can make it out alive. <laughs>